Hi, welcome to Moonfax. Today I'm drawing a guy exploring the jungle. There were lots of things I did right, but in the end I somehow still created something that I don't like. We'll get to those parts later. Alright, starting off I'm unhappy with the initial sketch, specifically the profile of the face which for some reason is something I struggle with. Even though I've practiced and followed so many tutorials, when I go to put my pencil to the paper the side view always comes out wonky. I want the centipede to look scarier so maybe adding some spikes will help that. And let's add harsher edges to the segments. I can't tell if this line on the arm I sketched was a mistake or... Oh, it was a contour line for the arm. I'm changing the camera angle now, but I dropped my pens and they made a really interesting beat. I'm sure this made sense to me when I was sketching it, but there's so many legs squished together I'm having a hard time telling where to put the ink. Okay, now that most of the centipede is drawn in, I want to try using ink to shade and add more texture to my line art because when I burnish the colored pencils, I lose a lot of that. Starting off easy, let's add a little shading to the fangs and then this little mouth thing can have some more texture and sh I just drew a hairy boss. I used to really be into shading with cross hatching and I even used pointillism to design a tattoo once, but I lost interest in pen shading when I started exploring other mediums and using color. I think if I were to refresh my memory in that skill, it would really elevate the art pieces that I draw in this style. I don't like the spikes anymore, so I'm going to ignore that part of the sketch and proceed with the texture of the segments. Okay, I just drew the nose rounder than I wanted, but here's a way to hack your life and fix it. If we add the slightest thickness to the tip of the nose, it makes it look sharper and also takes care of the line weight variation that makes everything look better. Inking hair strands often becomes a puzzle because it becomes so chaotic when I sketch it. But look at this. When I sketch, I didn't designate which strand is in front, so now I have to make a decision, which I hate. The whole point of sketching so extensively beforehand is so that I don't have to think too hard when I'm inking. And I mean, just like this part here, I have no idea what it is, but I sketched it, so I'm gonna follow it.
I think I just erased a line that was supposed to draw in, so I'm just gonna freehand it and hope it's okay. That's fine. Since I'm tired of editing line work, I'm gonna assume you're tired of watching it. So for a quick recap, I absolutely hit the ball out of the park with this hair. There were no major mistakes, my lines were relatively steady, and I got the flow just right. I bought a new shade of brown, but I didn't get it with skin specifically in mind, so I'm just going to do a quick swatch to see how it looks, and I think it looks okay, so I'm going to go forward with it. While I'm coloring this, I'm listening to TED Talks about shame because recently I've realized that this heavy, heavy feeling I've carried with me my entire life is in fact shame and not some abstract thing that I'll never be able to understand or fix. It started when I was reading something about how the ego subconsciously influences our every decision and hearing this didn't initially shed light on the problem with my perspective because I used to only understand ego to be something that referred to people who were full of themselves. Once I realized that ego comes in many different forms, I could see a lot easier how shame has held my ego by the ball sack. I grew up in a religion where the, the person I am is not up to code with the requirements of the church. And so as a kid, I learned that I'm a shameful person and that's just the way it is. So throughout my life, whenever something good happened to me, I would immediately self-sabotage because if something made a shameful person happy, then that thing itself must be shameful. So now that I had this new epiphany, I was able to look at my relationship with my art through this new lens. And it was a bit disheartening to realize how many opportunities I've thrown away for the sake of escaping my perceived shame. Never mind the countless small offers I've let go of. I got two major art scholarships to two different schools, as well as my work being accepted into two different group galleries, which I didn't even go to on the opening night because I felt so ashamed of myself and the fact that I existed and that my, my existence was existing somewhere. So up to this point, it feels safest to put myself in circumstances that belittle me and make me feel like nothing because that's what validates the way I understood reality. And it's not like I'm content with living my life in this way, so obviously I'm going to keep trying to figure out what the root of the problem is and I think realizing that I feel ashamed for being alive is, is the root. And I feel a little bit silly now because saying that out loud, it just seems so obvious, but I've operated, shame has been my operation system. So it's kind of like I've been trying to see my own eyeball without the help of a reflective surface. And all of this could just be me overthinking as always, but I honestly really think I'm onto something for myself because like, I usually wake up at 3 or 4 with a ton of anxiety, but like this morning, I slept in until 6. Like, that never happens for me. So anyways, I like this drawing now. I'm just not a fan of the green hair. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video.